Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about three things, spring smashers, pull down rigs, and how to use your cell phone to beg your chassis manufacturer or your local shot guru for the secret setup cut, of the week. Cut, cut, cut. What are you doing? That wasn't in the script. What script? I don't know, maybe the script for this video we're filming? Oh, I thought the name of the video was three things that you absolutely don't need, like at all. Roll it again. I got this. We'll do it live. No. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. But for reals though, the cool thing about the success and the reaction to the last video I made was that people seem to derive inspiration from it. And it made me realize that there is a lot more interest in the technical side of the sport than I originally thought. If this YouTube channel can serve as something that fosters more inspiration, innovation and resourcefulness then i think it's worth continuing because at the end of the day dirt late model racing isn't formula one it's a grassroots sport filled with grassroots people and i think it's important to show that you can go race without a million dollar budget but in order to do that at the top level you have to be resourceful so without further ado what we're going to be talking about today is cad which stands for computer aided design flat plate cutting and 3d printing i love the quote Teach a man to fish and he can, f no, that's not it. Give a man to fish and he can eat fish. G Give a man a fish and he can eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he can eat for a lifetime. Yeah. And so to me, CAD is a Boston whaler with quad 400s on the back. 3D printing is your fish finder and flat plate cutting is a hundred foot wide fish net. These are three things we absolutely need to be able to build things in the shop. And the best part about it is none of this stuff's really that expensive. If it was, I probably wouldn't have it. CAD's about a hundred bucks a year. You can get a relatively good 3d printer for about two to 300 bucks off Amazon. And a plasma table can run you anywhere from a thousand to five thousand bucks. And if you don't want to buy a plasma table, there's plenty of services online that cut stuff pretty cheaply. Let's start with CAD. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and is extremely powerful. With CAD, you're limited only by your imagination. It's essentially the way you get ideas from your head to the computer screen. You can build parts as simple as a body mounting tab, as complex as a jet engine, and all things in between. There are tens of thousands of videos comparing and contrasting different CAD softwares, and there are tutorials on everything you can imagine for people with all ranges of skill and experience. So I'm not going to make a long how-to video, but I am going to use this opportunity to scream from the rooftop how awesome CAD is and hopefully generate some interest in some people that may not have been exposed to CAD otherwise. But a quick recommendation I would have would be Autodesk's Fusion 360. It's free for personal use, very powerful, and has a large user base, so finding instructional videos is very easy. Let's look at an example of how useful CAD can be. As you can see here, I've got my right rear four link plates pulled up. Let's say that hypothetically I wanted to build a shortener bracket for the lower rod because clearly I haven't drilled enough holes in this thing already. So my standard length is 17 inches. So let's build a shortener bracket that allows me to run a 15 inch rod. And let's do a circular array and we will do four additional holes with two and a half degrees of spacing. Add some circles around the outside holes to make the outer profile. Set all of these circles equal to each other and connect some dots. Trim some of the excess. Put the holes so that we can actually bolt this to the four link plate. And that should be it.
Another fun thing we can do is make little models that simulate how the suspension works. I made a drawing representing the rear end and the bird cage and connected it to the forelink plates. As you can see, we can move the suspension around and play with bar angles and bar lengths and see how it affects the steer and the indexing. But now that we have our little shortener bracket designed, now we have to figure out how to make it. Which is a nice segue into the next part of this video talking about flat plate cutting. There are multiple processes for flat plate cutting, all of which have their own pros and cons. For example, wire EDM cutting can cut through extremely thick pieces of metal with unbelievable precision, but it's super slow. Laser cutting, on the other hand, can cut with high precision, can cut through relatively thick metal, but can cut extremely fast. But these laser cutters can cost upwards of a million dollars. Water jet machines are usually cheaper than lasers, can do a similar job, but can also cut through anything and aren't just limited to metal. The downside is they're pretty messy and they're a lot slower. Plasma cutting is the 80-20 rule of flat plate cutting. It does about 80% as good as some of the other cutters at about 20% of the cost. And then you have the old grinder and drill, which is pretty much terrible in every way. But if you're not going to learn CAD, this is one of your few options. Since I don't have a million dollars lying around to buy a laser table, we only have two practical options. One, we can outsource it. Or two, I can cut it on my little plasma table I have. First, we need to export the drawing as a DXF file. This will be required whether we cut it ourselves or we outsource it. We can either look for a local cutting service or we can use an online one like Send Cut Send. Because big manufacturing shops generally don't like doing onesie twosie jobs, Send Cut Send would probably be better for this. You literally drag and drop your DXF file onto the home page and within seconds it will give you a quote and a lead time. But hot laps is in two hours and we don't have time for this shit. To cut this ourselves, first we need to use CAM to generate a toolpath for the machine to use. This CAM software is integrated nicely into Fusion 360, the program I recommended earlier. In the grand scheme of CNC machines, plasma tables are really simple. Basically, we just need to tell the CAM software a few simple parameters, like the material thickness, what shapes we actually want it to cut, feeds and speeds, and a few other parameters. After running a quick simulation to make sure everything looks okay, we can save the G-code and head out to the machine. Here's my little Langmeier Systems plasma table. I think it was order number 20 that this company ever had, so I was able to get this thing for 700 bucks. I think it's a little bit more now, but still a, a pretty affordable price for what it's capable of. As you can see here, I already got the part pulled up. I've got the machine zeroed out over this little sliver of metal. And we're going to hit send. Well, this is right off the machine. Still a little bit of cleanup work left, but all in all, a pretty good cut. A few seconds and a flapper wheel, and this thing will be ready to bolt on the car. So that was fun, but what if we needed a more complex part? One more three-dimensional. Enter one of my favorite things in life, 3D printing. 3D printing is a relatively new form of additive manufacturing which is different than the more traditional, subtractive forms of manufacturing. Historically, you would start with an oversized blank of raw material and chip away at it until it became the part that you wanted. With additive manufacturing, you start with nothing and only add material until you get the part that you want. 
This is much more material efficient and it gives you a lot more freedom as far as part design. Just like with flat plate cutting, there are lots of various processes for 3D printing, ranging from extremely complex and expensive, using lasers and crazy metal alloys, to cheap and affordable, using simple three-axis desktop machines printing different types of plastic. For this video, we're obviously going to focus on the latter, which is called FDA, wait, no, FD, fused deposit mod, FDM printing, fused deposit modeling. Essentially, you print one thin layer of plastic and then you fuse or melt another thin layer of plastic on top of that and repeat the process until you have a fully formed part. The only downsides to this type of 3D printing are you're limited on materials to a few types of plastic and it actually takes a while to print parts. But this doesn't really matter because it's completely hands-free so you could theoretically hit print before you went to sleep and wake up and there would be a part waiting for you. All right, let's run through a practical example of using a 3D printer. For another project I'm working on, I need to be able to mount this battery and also connect to its positive and negative terminals. Using some digital calipers, I should be able to get the measurements I need to be able to successfully design what I need in CAD. If you don't have digital calipers, get some. One cool thing about the 3D printing community is basically everybody shares their work. So technically I could just download this part off the internet and hit print. But I want to do mine a little bit differently. This part took around 10 or 15 minutes. So here's a highlight of a few of the steps it took to get this thing to completion. As you can see, I added some slots to hold the terminal straight. And I also added some counter sinks for two hex head quarter 20 bolts. Now that the design is finished up, we can export as an STL file. This is the file type needed by 3D printing's CAM equivalent, which is appropriately named a slicer. The slicer is what generates the G code for the 3D printer. In the slicer, you can orient the part how you want, and you can dictate a bunch of key parameters that determine the overall print quality and how long the print takes. After giving the simulation a once over and making sure everything looks okay, we can hit save and head out to the printer. It's also worth noting that this print will take about three and a half hours and cost 66 cents, yes, cents, worth of material. All right, so we will insert the SD card, pull open the file, and hit print. And we will see you guys in three and a half hours. And we're back, a successful print. See how good we are. That fucking good. Whew. 3D prints rarely go right the first time. But yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. This video is going to lay the groundwork for future build videos we have that will definitely be referencing these three things. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.